Aside from the fact that I just generally enjoy building apps with Angular, uh, one of the key Angular things that keeps Angular in my number one friend spot on MySpace and what I miss when I'm using other libraries or frameworks is Angular's dependency injection system. So most people don't need to know any more than the basics of how to inject a service, basically this. This allows you to use a singleton service that can easily be shared with any component in your entire app, making it a super convenient way to share data logic state wherever you need it. But there is far more power available in this system and it gets quite a bit more complicated. To more fully comprehend how dependency injection works in Angular is probably the most challenging Angular concept to learn. So I wanted to see who could explain it better, me or ChatGPT. So here's the setup. Both ChatGPT and myself are going to provide answers to four questions related to dependency injection. So before answering the questions myself and getting ChatGPT's answers, I decided on the following rules. I will come up with all of my answers before getting ChatGPT's so I'm not influenced by it, and I will not change my answer even if ChatGPT makes me look stupid. I will always use ChatGPT's first answer. I will feed each question into ChatGPT in order so that if it wants, it can utilize the history of previous answers to provide context for newer answers. I will be adding visuals for my own explanation, so I will, to the best of my ability, add those in for ChatGPT's responses as well. And I will also try to read ChatGPT's answers enthusiastically as if they were my own. Okay, question one. What is dependency injection in Angular and how can you use it? So roughly speaking, dependency injection provides you access to an instance of a class without having to create it yourself with the new keyword. Although this is commonly how dependency injection is used, it is also possible for injected dependencies to just be simple values like strings. In Angular, we can inject a dependency by supplying it as a type through the constructor. So this would now mean that we can access an instance of my service in this class using this.myService without ever actually having to instantiate the service ourselves. And in newer versions of Angular, we can also use the inject function to inject a dependency instead of using the constructor like this. So one commonly utilized benefit of this dependency injection system is that it allows us to easily share singleton services throughout the application. Angular will handle creating an instance of a class once, and then we can share that instance among multiple different components, which provides a very convenient way to share data throughout the application. Dependency injection, DI, is a design pattern and software architecture technique in which a component or object receives its dependencies from an external source rather than creating them itself. In Angular, DI is used to provide components with their dependencies rather than having the component create them itself. So this helps to decouple the component from its dependencies, making the component easier to test, reuse, and maintain. So to use dependency injection in Angular, you will first need to create a service or other dependency that you want to inject into a component. Then you will need to register the service with the Angular dependency injection system. This can be done in the components constructor or in a module where the component is declared. Side note from Josh here, I assume it means that the dependency must be registered as a provider. Uh, this can be done in the module the component is declared in using the provided in configuration or through the components decorator, not the components constructor as is being suggested here. Okay, back to ChatGPT. Once the service is registered with the DI system, you can use the injectable decorator to specify that the service is available for injection. You can then inject the service into a component by adding it as a parameter in the components constructor. Here is an example of how you might use dependency injection to inject a service into a component in Angular. So in this example, the my service service is registered with the DI system and made available for injection using the injectable decorator. The service is then injected into the my component component by adding it as a parameter in the components constructor. The component can then use the service to perform some action or retrieve data. Overall, dependency injection is a useful technique for decoupling components and services in Angular, making them easier to test, reuse, and maintain. So although ChatGPT's answer is mostly correct here, it did provide some misleading information, so I'm going to give the points for this one to me. Okay, question two. What is a token in Angular, and how does it relate to dependency injection? When a dependency is being injected, Angular needs to know what to supply. So this is where the concept of a token becomes relevant. In our injection examples, we can consider these to be tokens. 
the role of a provider is to say what that token is. So we could supply that provider directly in the component metadata like this. Now Angular knows when we are trying to inject this token that it should use an instance of this class. The token can be whatever we like though. For example, we might choose to override this token with something else. Now, rather than using the actual class, when we try to inject this dependency, it is going to use this alternative implementation instead. In Angular, a token is a value that is used to identify a dependency that can be injected into a component or service. When a component or service is created, Angular's dependency injection system looks for a corresponding token in the DI system's registry and injects the corresponding dependency into the component or service. So there are two types of tokens in Angular. There are type tokens. These are used to identify dependencies by their type. For example, if you have a service that depends on another service, you can use the type of the other service as the token. When the DI system injects the dependency, it will look for a service in the DI system's registry that matches the type of the token. There are also injection tokens. These are custom tokens that you can create to identify dependencies. Injection tokens are useful when you want to use a value other than a type as the token. For example, you might create an injection token to represent a configuration value that you want to inject into a service. So here is an example of how you might use a type token and an injection token to inject dependencies into a component in Angular. Josh here again, uh, this code won't work as is. Uh, in the service where the config value is being injected, it still needs to be provided somewhere, uh, which could be done using a factory function like this. Okay, back to chat GPT again. In this example, the my service service is injected with a configuration value using an injection token. The my component component is injected with the my other service service using a type token. Overall, tokens play a key role in Angular's dependency injection system as they are used to identify dependencies that can be injected into components and services. So I think ChatGPT did reasonably well here and actually provided some interesting information. But the answer was spoiled a bit by it neglecting to mention providing the injection token. So I think both of our responses have merits. Uh, mine is a bit simpler, ChatGPT's is more detailed. Uh, because of the provider situation, I'm going to give this one to me again. And it's officially half time now, so this would be a great point to grab a snack, hydrate, and also leave a like and subscribe before continuing. Okay, question three. What are injector trees in Angular and how are they used to resolve providers for tokens? Angular uses the concept of hierarchical dependency injection, which is an important continuation of our token concept. So in the previous example, we supplied a provider for a token directly in the component metadata. So Angular knew what that token was supposed to be, but what happens if we didn't add a provider for that token in the component metadata? So this is where injector trees come into play. It is how Angular figures out what a token is supposed to be. And there are actually two injector trees, the element injector tree and the module injector tree. But it all starts with the element injector tree, which directly reflects the application's component tree. So when Angular sees that a dependency is being injected, it will first look to the component's own providers to see what it needs to inject, but we might not specify any providers in this component. In that case, Angular will start going up the element injector tree to find a provider for the token. It will go to the parent component and check its providers. If it finds the token there, it will use that. If that parent component doesn't define a provider for the token, it will keep going up the component tree until it finds one. So this will repeat all the way up until the root component. But what if we still don't find a provider for the token? So this is where the module injector tree comes into play. So the module injector tree deals with providers that are defined in ng modules or providers that are supplied by using the provided in property of the injectable decorator. And this is generally what we use to share a single instance of a class throughout the entire application. So if we couldn't resolve the token using the element injector tree, Angular will then check the providers of the ng module that the component was declared in. And then the root injector, which is where the token will be found if the provided in property was used. So if no provider can be found throughout this entire process, we reach the null injector, which will cause an error. In Angular, an injector is a service that is responsible for resolving dependencies for a component or service. An injector maintains a registry of providers, which are key value pairs that map tokens to their corresponding dependencies. 
When a component or service requests a dependency by specifying a token, the injector looks up the corresponding provider in its registry and returns the associated dependency. In Angular, there is a hierarchy of injectors known as the injector tree. Each Angular application has a root injector and every component in the application has its own injector. When a component is created, it creates a new child injector that is linked to the parent injector. So this creates a tree structure with the root injector at the top and the component injectors branching off from it. The injector tree is used to resolve providers for tokens when a component or service requests a dependency. When a component or service requests a dependency, the injector first looks in its own registry for a provider that matches the token. If it cannot find a matching provider, it will look in the parent injector's registry. And this process continues up the injector tree until the root injector is reached. If the root injector cannot find a matching provider, an error will be thrown. Overall, the injector tree is an important part of Angular's dependency injection system as it is used to resolve providers for tokens and provide components and services with their dependencies. So again, generally good information here from ChatGPT. Uh, this time my answer was the more in-depth one. Uh, ChatGPT is also insisting on using the inject notation here to inject a type token, which is a bit confusing. And mostly for that reason, I am going to give this one to me overall. Okay, now for the final question. What is the point of decorators like optional, self, skip self, and host? So these are called resolution modifiers. At least for most basic scenarios, they are not often used. So these just give us more control over how hierarchical dependency injection works. So we discussed before how if a component is trying to inject a dependency, it will first look to the providers defined for that component specifically. And if it is not defined, it will climb its way up the injector tree until it finds a provider for that token. But let's say we don't want that to happen. Let's say that if the provider is not supplied directly to the component itself, then we don't want it. In that case, we could use the self resolution modifier. Now, unless the component supplies its own provider for this dependency, it will cause an error. That might be a bit awkward though. What do we do if we don't want the app to error if a token can't be resolved? So that's when we could use the optional resolution modifier. Now, if the provider cannot be found, it will just be null rather than causing an error. In Angular, decorators are functions that can be attached to class declarations, methods, properties, and parameters to modify their behavior. There are several decorators that are related to Angular's dependency injection system, including optional, self, skip self, and host. These decorators are used to control how dependencies are injected into components and services. Here is a brief overview of each decorator and how it is used. Optional, this decorator is used to specify that a dependency is optional. If the dependency is not available in the DI system's registry, Angular will not throw an error when it attempts to inject the dependency. Instead, it will inject null or undefined into the component or service. Self. This decorator is used to specify that a dependency should be injected from the current injector rather than from a parent injector. This can be useful if you want to ensure that a component or service receives a specific implementation of a dependency rather than a more general implementation that might be provided by a parent injector. Skip self. This decorator is used to specify that a dependency should be injected from a parent injector rather than from the current injector. This can be useful if you want to ensure that a component or service receives a more general implementation of a dependency rather than a specific implementation that might be provided by the current injector. Host. This decorator is used to specify that a dependency should be injected from the injector of the element that hosts the component. Uh, this can be useful if you want to ensure that a component receives a dependency that is specific to the hosting element rather than a more general dependency that might be provided by a parent injector. Here is an example of how these decorators might be used in Angular. In this example, the my component component is injected with four dependencies, each of which is decorated with a different DI decorator. The optional decorator specifies that the my service dependency is optional, so it would not throw an error if it cannot be found in the DI systems registry. The self decorator specifies that the my other service dependency should be injected from the current injector rather than from a parent injector. The skip self decorator specifies that the my third service dependency should be injected from a parent injector rather than from the current injector. The host decorator specifies that the my fourth service dependency should be injected from the injector of the element that hosts the component. Uh, this ensures that the component receives a dependency that is specific to the hosting element rather than a more general dependency that might be provided by a parent injector. Overall, the decorators optional self, skip self and host are useful tools for controlling how dependencies are injected into components and services in Angular. 
They can help you to specify which dependencies are required, where they should be injected from, and whether they are optional or required. This can be helpful for testing and debugging, as well as for ensuring that components and services receive the dependencies they need to function properly. Okay, so ChatGPT's answer is the more detailed one again this time. Uh, whilst ChatGPT's answer is good, it feels a bit documentation recitally to me. Uh, my answer probably works better for a short YouTube video, uh, but ChatGPT's answer is good overall. Uh, I'll mark this one up as a draw. So with three answers to me and a draw, that gives us a final tally of three and a half points to Josh and zero and a half points to ChatGPT. So although I gave myself most of the points here, I think ChatGPT's answers were generally pretty good, uh, but they seem to be about 95% correct. And unfortunately the little mistakes it makes could end up being very confusing. For example, you could end up using the inject notation for a type token, which it keeps suggesting, which will work, but it's also not required for type tokens, which you probably wouldn't find out until you showed someone your code. And it's also worth noting that ChatGPT in its current form was only trained on data up to 2021, so more current information won't be available. So I think I won here, but let me know in the comments what you think the final score was and whether I should just give up and delete my channel right now. So if you did make it this far in the video, please consider leaving a like or subscribe before you go, and I hope to catch you again for the next video.